Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. And we're going to talk about the comic book industry. Yeah, I know we haven't been doing a lot of comic book videos lately, but there hasn't really been a lot of news about the comic book industry other than its uh, decline, which is kind of depressing. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. There are a lot of other channels out there that cover kind of the day-to-day -day decline of the comic book industry and talk about how things are changing for creators and talk about some other options for uh, comic book creators or, or distributing comic books. We've sort of gotten away from covering the blow-by-blow -blow because it, it is kind of depressing. And honestly, our audience, a lot of people have moved on. They're like, comics are dead. Uh, we're moving on. We're moving on to other stuff. We're moving on to manga. We're moving on to anime. Uh, gaming, etc., etc., and so we're like, yeah, if nobody cares, we're not gonna talk about it. And that just kind of shows where comic books are, I guess, in the uh, the pop culture totem pole right now that they're near the bottom, um, which is very, very sad because comic books used to kind of lead the charge for everything else. You know, uh, at least back in the '80s and '90s when I was a kid, it was you know comics influenced everything, and we're seeing all these movies that are out now based on. Uh, you know, comic book stories, comic book characters doing very, very well, uh, except for Birds of Prey. But no, no, actually, <laughs> there are a lot of comic book movies that haven't done that well, too. But, uh, you know, it's very weird to see the comic book industry in such a state when, you know, it is influencing all these, these movies and TV shows that are doing gangbusters. So we're going to talk about DC Comics in particular and i saw part of a video yesterday now i don't have a lot of time to go out and watch everybody's videos because there are a lot of people i follow uh whose opinions i trust uh talk about the comic book industry and i don't have time to watch everybody's videos but i did see a video yesterday a part of a video by ethan van skyver comic artist pro secrets uh who ethan is a former dc comics artist he worked for dc for a very long time mostly i think on green lantern and, uh, you know, he has a little uh, inside knowledge of things going on over there. And, uh, you know, he was offering an opinion on what's going on with DC's rumored reboot. Yeah, apparently they're going to try to reboot DC Comics again. Again. This will be like the umpteenth reboot in the last decade. But there's a difference with this reboot versus previous reboots in this case i guess this generation 5 or 5g they're going to replace all the main characters <laughs> all of the main superman batman flash green lantern they're going to replace them all in what appears to be a desperate attempt to boost readership because comic numbers are not good they're not good right now the comic book industry has completely flatlined at least the direct market and this seems to be dc's last ditch effort the problem is is it's probably not going to go the way they expect it to go and we're going to talk about that so before we get into the video please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants we're only about 5,000 5,000 away from 100,000 subs guys that's that's crazy and most of that has been in the last uh like nine months you know things have really exploded since you know we're able to devote more time to the channel due to uh uh my being unceremoniously booted off of a blog that uh, my wife and I spent three years building up, but I digress. Um, but we've had more time to devote to the channel and it has exploded and thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. So to kind of start at the beginning here, comic book sales are down. They've flatlined. There have been a couple of bumps, uh, a couple of uh, tiny, tiny little bumps, you know, if there's an event or something that the sales had picked up, but for the most part, they're down. They're down again in January. I know, I think it was like October or November last year. Everybody was like, comics are fine. Look, we had a really good month. And uh, it's the best month comics have had in, in years. And I was skeptical because I look at the death of the comic book industry as like the death of a human being and the stages of death. And this is really morbid, but I think it's like a universal truth here. Before a human or before an animal gets ready to die, sometimes they have one or two good days. This is very true. If you've actually, you know, experienced uh, the death of a loved one, um, especially if it's after a prolonged illness, this is something I've had to go through. There's, there's this little bit of false hope 
because that loved one, you know, a week or two before they die, they might have one or two really, really good days. This happened with my grandfather. He was bedridden for months after a prolonged illness and you know he sort of dipped in and out of consciousness he was sleeping a lot you know he wasn't in a coma but you know he was kind of there and he wasn't there and it got progressively worse and then one day he just kind of woke up and was himself he was talking he was you know uh, reminiscing about things and he had a good day or two and everybody kind of had this false hope like look pap's getting better it's going to be fine. He's going to get up and it's going to be like Willy Wonka and he's going to get up and he's going to start dancing around like uh, Grandpa Joe. And that's not what happened. What happens is a lot of times before uh, a person is ready to die, the body goes through like one last push. And I think that's what's going on with the comic book industry right now. It's like one last push before the final breath. And it sounds very, very morbid. But I think that's what's going on. We're going to see a couple of, of bumps and some of those sales might be artificially inflated numbers as these companies try to justify their existence. You know, uh, Marvel and DC, they're in do or die mode right now because, you know, one is owned by Disney, one is owned by Warner Brothers. Both are looking to cut corners. Uh, Warner Brothers more so. So Warner Brothers has a massive amount of debt. And we've talked about this before in regards to Rooster Teeth and Crunchyroll and some of the uh, divisions that they're cutting that Warner Brothers has this massive, massive amount of debt. AT&T bought them and they're looking to cut every corner they possibly can cut. I mean, they've shut down streaming services. They shut down Drama Fever. They've really cut back on Rooster Teeth. They also own DC Comics. And there's been a lot of talk about how DC Comics basically isn't pulling its own weight anymore, and it might be dead weight to Warner. Even though they strip mine comic books for movie and TV show ideas, video games, etc., etc., they don't need the comic book publishers anymore. We've talked about this in regards to Marvel, that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going off in its own direction. It doesn't even need the comic books anymore. And it's the same with DC Comics. Like, they've got decades and decades and decades of stories. They can strip mine. They can create stuff wholesale. They're already doing it. I mean, you look at you know, a lot of the movies and the reboots, and they have very, very little to do with the source material. They're not following the comics beat for beat. They might take a couple of ideas, and then they turn it into something else. And audiences, casual audiences, don't know the difference. You know, and if the comic books aren't selling... From a, just a purely financial standpoint, if DC Comics is costing you millions of dollars per year, the comic books don't justify their own existence, then it's time to maybe cut them loose. at and CEO Randall Stevenson went on record as saying, we have no sacred cows. We have no sacred cows. Uh, they shut down Vertigo. They shut Vertigo down as an imprint a couple of months ago last year. You know, again, they, they don't care. They don't care that Vertigo has been kind of a thing, although Vertigo's you know, pretty much run into the ground by the time they they uh, they shut it down. But they did. And uh, he said during an investment call last fall, AT&T had Randall Stevenson. We're committed to an objective, objective, diligent and disciplined process. We'll analyze the merits of each of our businesses individually as part of the whole. Uh, but let me be clear. We have no sacred cows. So Batman, Superman. 80 plus year history or whatever, uh, they don't care. They don't care. You know, B Batman and Superman will live on in movies, they'll live on in TV shows, but they don't really care about the comic books. So you gotta realize, you know, that that is going on. The sales are down. So what is the solution? Well, the solution seems to be another reboot, another complete reboot of DC Comics, except this time they're going to go all in and apparently change everybody. Uh, they're going to change everybody. Jonathan Kent is going to become Superman. Luke Fox is going to become Batman. Captain Cold Jr. becomes Flash. Uh, so let's let's see here. So we got Jonathan Kent, who's Superboy. I think now or he was in uh, Super Sons, which I actually like quite a bit. I like Super Sons quite a bit. Um, we've got... Uh, Lucius Fox's kid becoming Batman. We've got Captain Cold Jr. becoming Flash. And we've got, this is a new character. I'm not familiar with her, but she's going to take over reportedly as Green Lantern. So why are they doing this? Well, I, I have to agree with uh, Ethan Van Skyver. They're doing this because they have to justify their continued 
existence. They have to show Warner Brothers that they're creating new characters or repurposing characters that could be turned into TV shows and movies. You know, and, but, but this is a really bad idea. Uh, this is a really bad idea because what's going to happen... Well, first of all, you've spent decades building up brand awareness that Clark Kent is Superman. Bruce Wayne is Batman. You know, they've done this before where they switch characters out short term and they usually do them one or two at a time. They don't change everybody. Now, I want to point out that Marvel has already done this and it didn't go very well. It did not go well at all. In 2015, the all new, all different Marvel Universe reboot happened and they swapped everybody out uh almost everybody it was not a good idea and this is coming from 2015 this is geek dad geek dad which is a pretty liberal uh pretty liberal blog said change for change's sake is always worrisome when it comes to comics yeah so everybody was talking about this like wow this is the all new all different marvel we're gonna change everybody we got female wolverine female thor we got Ms. Marvel, we've got, you know, uh, Falcon taking over for Captain America. This is what we need. Uh, this is what we need to, to make Marvel Comics sell again. Two years later. Two years later. Not even two years later. 2017, the year almost everything went wrong for Marvel Comics. Marvel had a catastrophic year in 2017 and a lot of that fallout i think you can trace back to the decisions that were made with the all new all different marvel and that they had to backpedal they had to bring back the classic characters because that was their bread and butter you know again you can get away with swapping one or two characters out absolutely you can get away with it um because it happens all the time it's happened for years in comics i mean even batman you know we had Azrael take over for a while uh superman we had the death of superman we had like four different supermen you know th th you can't and then we had like a lightning superman all this weird crap back in the 90s but you can do that with one or two characters when you try to switch out the entire roster that's when you run into problems and marvel did this and they paid dearly for it and they've never been able to rebuild i guess you know they've won some people back with the x-men books but i've heard that the x-men books aren't selling as well as marvel would like you to think uh so again you know this is what dc's planning to do and the same thing and this is desperation and this might actually be the death knell not just of dc comics as a publisher but of the comic book industry because if dc comics fails if they do this and it fails and it becomes this catastrophic cluster that leads to uh you know a, a huge huge hit in comic book sales dc can't afford to take a hit they have to sell more product or warner brothers is going to come knocking they're going to come knocking and say you know what guys uh you're not pulling your own weight it's time to shut it down so if this doesn't work and warner brothers decides to pull the plug on dc comics that is going to effectively end the direct market at least for new issues i know a lot of comic shops and we've talked about this before the comic shops that are left including some that i've gone to they don't even deal in new issues anymore it's too dicey for them they sell back issues and they do well selling collectibles and back issues but they don't even carry new comics because they don't know what's going to sell you know, there are comic shops that went out of business because they were flooded with new Marvel comics that they could not sell. So I know a lot more comic shops are just dealing in back issues. And at that point, it almost becomes like, like a vinyl store, like a record store where, yeah, they're still making records, but they're mostly selling vintage stuff. Uh, they become like, so comic shops basically become antique stores at that point. You know, and that's really, really sad. It's it's terribly sad. But that's the state of the comic book industry right now. If DC pulls out, and I thought for sure, I'll be honest, I thought Marvel would be the first one to fold because Disney, have, having worked in Disney comics, knowing people on the publishing side of things at Disney. I mean, I've worked in Disney comics for almost 15 years for different publishers. Okay, knowing what Disney actually thinks of comic books, they think very, very little of comic books. I thought for sure that they would pull the plug on Marvel um before warner would shutter dc comics but it, it turns and then if dc pulls out they shut down the direct market effectively or they shut down a lot of comic shops because there goes half your inventory poof gone dc is not publishing comics anymore and then what happens well then marvel probably pulls out too because what's the what's the point what's the point 
you know, if everybody's just pulling out a comic book publishing because it's not profitable and we're just going to publish back issues and and uh, collections of, of older comic books, which they could do forever. I mean, seriously, Marvel and DC could just republish decades worth of material forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, the, the, the big stories, Infinity War and uh, Infinity Gauntlet and, uh, you know, Dark Phoenix Saga and uh, Death in the Family. They could publish this stuff forever. You know, Watchmen, they're probably looking at that, too. You know, you've got Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns. DC's still making money on the old stuff. You know, why why take a chance on new stuff when you can just sell this stuff forever? And that that could be what happens. You know, and I don't know what happens to the comic book industry after that. I really don't. I think it's, you know, these smaller publishers, they don't sell nearly enough to keep the direct market going. So I think at that point, unless you've come up with a backup plan to sell your comics and other outlets beside comic book shops, I think you're screwed. I mean, I really do, because it's going to be, there's going to be a domino effect if Marvel and or DC pulls out, which I think is very possible, especially now. Yeah, especially with Warner Brothers cutting costs, then that just sets off a chain reaction. That that shutters, you know, Boom and IDW. IDW is already hanging on by their fingertips. You know, Dark Horse, I think they'll still be okay for a while because they diversify. They do a lot of video game art books and they do manga and they do some other stuff. I think those kinds of publishers will, will be okay, but I think you'll see the end of like Boom and uh, a lot of these smaller publishers that keep popping up from time to time. Um, Oni Press and and uh, Lion Forge had to merge just to survive. It's it's going to be catastrophic for the North American comic book market. You know, um, I mean, comics will still go on. There still will be graphic novels. You're going to have you know publishers like Alterna still selling single issues through hopefully other channels besides comic book shops, which they're trying very hard to do. And you're going to have people crowdfunding comics and selling comics directly. People will sell graphic novels through Amazon or whatever. But the comic book industry, as we know it, the direct market, it's, it's, this is it. This is game over. If this does not work, if this Hail Mary pass uh, doesn't work, then that is, that is the end of the comic book industry, effectively. And I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. I don't think this is going to be a hit. I, I think changing all of the characters like this is going to be the kiss of death. We've already seen it, and it didn't work well for Marvel, and it's not going to work well for DC unless these books are absolutely amazing, and I don't think they're going to be. I don't think they're going to be. I think it's going to be yet another cash grab by a corporate-owned comic book company, and audiences are going to smell it, and they're going to reject it. Just my opinion. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, and we will talk later. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.